Welcome to lesson 2 of the Pandas data structures module. In this lesson, we will focus on Pandas data frames. A data frame is a two-dimensional labeled data structure similar to a table or a spreadsheet. By the end of this lesson, you will know how to create, inspect and manipulate data frames using our real-world datasets. Keep in mind, we have explored Pandas data frames in the past as well. However, it is very important for you to go through this lesson with attention and understand all the additional concepts that are covered. There might be some redundancy. But it is still worth to go through this lesson without missing anything and also it is very important for you to practice everything that is covered in this lesson. Now first let's get into the details about what is a pandas data frame. Already we have seen details about series, series represents a column. When it comes to a data frame, a pandas data frame is essentially a table where each column is a panda series and the rows are indexed. This makes it a versatile structure for working with tablet data. Let's see it in action. To explore data frames, let's start by loading the salesreps data.csv dataset into a data frame and inspecting it. Then we'll take it to the next step. Here, let me add a code cell. Before running anything, let me make sure I choose the kernel. Now we should be able to say import pandas as pd to import pandas. Then we should be able to say sales underscore reps underscore data. Then equal to pd dot read underscore csv then data then uh, car underscore sales then sales underscore reps underscore data dot csv let me change single quotes to double quotes most likely i'll be using double quotes going forward hence i'm switching to double quotes here as well the path is the correct path here we are trying to load the data from csv into a data frame by name sales underscore reps underscore data now it is created we should be able to say type then pass to it to understand the data type of this. It is of type data frame. Now to preview the data as we have already explored quite a few times in the past, we should be able to use head and then we should be able to preview the data. When it comes to pandas, it provides several methods to inspect and understand the structure of a data frame. Let's use some of these methods to explore the data set. Once again, we have gone through some of these in the past as well. You can consider this as revision for all these important functions. The functions are nothing but shape, columns, info. Here to get number of rows and columns, you can just use shape. Shape is not a function. It is attribute. By using shape, you should be able to get details about number of rows, which is nothing but 22 here. Then number of columns, which is nothing but 8. So this is a tuple which is written by shape. If you just wanted to get number of rows, you can actually index for the first element and then you should be able to get number of rows. In the similar manner, you should be able to say one to get number of columns. Now, if you wanted to get the column names, then you have to use columns. Again, this is attribute, not function. Hence, you should not be having brackets at the end. You can see all the column names here. There are eight columns. All the eight column names are displayed here. In case if you wanted to get summary information about the data frame, you can use a function called as info. Info is a function we have used in the past as well and you can see the details here. So these are the column names, rep ID, first name, last name, etc. Then you can also see non-null count. None of the columns have null values. That's why you, you are seeing the same number of records with a non-null. You can also get the data type of each and every column here. So info gives you summary information of your data frame. When it comes to pandas data frames, one of the strengths is the ability to access specific columns or rows. Let's see how to work with individual columns first. In this case, I would like to get the data from region. For that purpose, I should be able to say sales underscore reps underscore data, then specify the column name, which is nothing but region. You can see the values in the region. Keep in mind, when we specify only one column like this, it actually create a series. So whatever results you are seeing are from the series which is returned by this piece of code. Now, let's say I wanted to get data related to two columns, not just one column. Then you have to create a data frame. You cannot use series to represent data from multiple columns. You have to use data frame only. So to create a data frame with two columns, you should be able to use this approach. In this case, I would like to get rep ID along with region. So I should be able to say sales reps data. Then in double square brackets, you have to specify the rep ID, then region. The column names can be separated by comma. Let me make sure I switch the single quotes to double quotes. This is the convention which I want to follow. Hence, 
I am taking a bit of time to convert the single quotes to double quotes. Even here, I'll just use double quotes. Now let me first run this and then run this. In this case, sales reps data with these two columns is data frame, not series. In case if you wanted to assign to a variable, you can assign to a variable and take it forward. The variable type will be of type data frame. You can also access specific rows using dot lock or dot lock methods, which we will explore in detail in the upcoming lessons. For now, we will not be exploring dot lock or dot lock. Those will be covered in subsequent lessons. Now. Each column in a data frame can have its own data types such as integers, floats or strings. Let's inspect the data types of our columns. For that purpose, we should be able to use D types. D types is also attribute. You just have to give the data frame name which is nothing but sales underscore reps underscore data. Then D types. You can see details here when it comes to rep ID and phone number, they are of type int64. However, when it comes to the remaining columns, they are of type object. Typically, strings are represented as objects only in data frames. When it comes to data frames, you can quickly summarize numerical columns in a data frame using the dot describe method. Let's try this. In this case, I am just using the data frame name which is nothing but sales underscore reps underscore data, then describe. It's a function, hence we have to add brackets at the end. Now you see it have picked only rep ID and phone number which is of type numeric and you can see the statistics for these two attributes or columns. When it comes to count, uh, both of them have 22. On top of count, uh, uh, it have also returned mean or average, standard deviation, min, max and also 25, 50 and 75 quartiles. I think earlier when I have covered uh, using series, I have mentioned uh, percentile, these are actually quartiles. When it comes to data frames, it is also important to check for missing data in data frame. Let's see how many missing values each column has. For that purpose, I should be able to say sales underscore reps underscore data, then is null, then sum. It will go through each and every column and it will see if there are null values and it will count those null values. You can see none of the columns have null values here. Let me actually use the Toyota sales data. Let me say Toyota underscore sales underscore data, then equal to PD dot read underscore CSV, then specify the path data car underscore sales, then Toyota sales data dot CSV. Now let me run this. Let me use this data frame, then invoke is null on top of it, then say sum. You can see out of all columns, only commission percentage have null values. Out of 5000, uh, it have 1274 null values. You can also easily add new columns to your data frame. Let's uh, generate the full name and add that column to the data frame. After adding the full name, let's also see how to drop the existing first name and last name columns. So in this case, I should be able to say sales underscore reps underscore data. First, let's preview the data. We have first name and last name. Here, we should be able to say sales underscore reps underscore data. Then full underscore name equal to sales underscore reps underscore data. For first name, this is the one. Then plus, then space then last name sales underscore reps underscore data then last underscore name now let me run this it has ran successfully let me preview the data here let me scroll towards right you see there is something called as full name now let me drop first name and last name and only have the full name for that purpose i just have to say sales underscore reps underscore data then drop let's look at the syntax i'm using help here it have returned the documentation of this function let's click on this to get all the details of this function you can see this takes quite a few arguments the first one is nothing but labels on top of labels you can also specify axis index so and so forth when it comes to labels you can specify the column names the default with respect to axis is zero it will try to use the names that are given to delete the rows. However, we wanted to delete the columns. Hence, we have to say axis equal to 1. 
it is very important for you to understand this. So the default for access is zero. If you specify labels with access as zero, which is default, it will try to identify the rows with that index values. As there are no rows with that index values, nothing will happen. In this case, we are attempting to remove the columns by labels. Hence, we have to specify the column names using labels and then we have to say one for the access. Let me close this and let me demonstrate so that you understand what I am talking about here. Before using drop to drop first name and last name, let me first review the column names. For that, I have come up with this code. You can see all the columns in the data frame. We have full name. We wanted to retain this and we wanted to drop first name and last name. The way we can achieve it is like this. We have to use the data frame, then drop, then the column names in the form of list. First one is nothing but first underscore name, then last underscore name, then access should be one then only it will check for these columns and it will attempt to drop those columns from the data frame now let me run this you can see here first name and last name are gone you can see full name without any issues this is how you should be able to add columns as well as drop the columns that being said in this lesson you learned how to work with pandas data frames including inspecting their structure accessing rows and columns and performing basic operations in the next lesson we'll dive deeper into accessing specific rows and columns using dot lock which is a powerful method for label based indexing